Welcome to another edition of Inside Town Hall. I'm Jim Cameron, your host and program director of Darien TV 79. And Inside Town Hall, you as a faithful viewer knows, is a program where we interview the chairs of various boards and commissions and advisory panels to get a sense of what their work is on behalf of folks who live in Darien. Our guest today on the program is Juliet Kane. She is the chair of the Beautification Commission. Juliet, welcome to Inside Town Hall. Thank you very much for inviting me, Jim. I'm happy to be here. Well, before we talk a little bit about the work of the commission itself, let's get to know you a bit better. What's your what's your background, either professionally or um, hobby wise? I mean, what was it that you bring to the table uh, as the chair of Beautification Commission? Oh, a lot of questions there. Well, um, it might have slipped your notice, but I wasn't born here. Um, I was born in I picked up on that. (laughs) I know some people confuse me with uh, having a Brooklyn accent, but I was actually born in England. (laughs) And I moved over here in 1982. And I was a corporate lawyer for my entire career. I spent over 30 years commuting on the train from, well, originally from Norwalk and then from Darien. And I spent my whole life, which my whole career, which is quite unusual these days, at the same law firm. And except for three years when I left to teach uh, law at NYU, I taught in the master's uh, tax program, the LLM program. And I did spend a few years in our London office. And that background is entirely unrelated to everything I do now. So I was practicing corporate finance. And since my retirement 10 years ago, I have become a passionate uh, advocate and hopefully educator in the area of environmental issues, mostly around uh, habitat, creating habitat uh, through the use of native plants and uh, that started with uh, working with the Darien Pollinator Pathway, or establishing that, in fact. And my background, while it seems totally unrelated, is actually very helpful because it has enabled me to understand how to study, how to learn about this completely new area without having any kind of formal background. And uh, I, I suppose that I it started with just a general interest in gardening that's just sort of burgeoned since I've had the time through not working to concentrate. And the the Beautification Commission, how long has it been around? Oh, that is actually a very good question that I'm not sure I know the answer to, but it, it definitely predates me by many years. And I was actually asked to become chair of the commission along with a good friend of mine, Lucia Zakowski, who's since moved to Vermont. And we were approached by the then chair of the DTC, who asked if uh, we would be interested in chairing. And neither of us were particularly interested. And I think it was partly because the name beautification sort of sounds like um, it's something that isn't very meaty. It's uh, it, it sort of connotes to me making things pretty and look good. And so I, I, I wasn't really embracing the idea uh, of serving originally, but then I looked at the ordinance, uh, the governing ordinance, and while it says that the mission of the commission is to improve the overall appearance of Darien, when I th- thought about it and, and looked a bit deeper, it seemed to me that you could accomplish that goal and at the same time bring an environmental focus and aspect to it so that you are basically doing um, two two things at once. So by improving the appearance of the town where we can using native plants, native trees, we are really augmenting the environment. We are adding to biodiversity, we're creating habitat, we're providing breeding grounds for our indigenous insects and pollinators. So it was, a, in a way, a very good platform to be able to, to do that with a, a town authority, if you like. And the, the commission itself has how many members and how are they uh, appointed? Well, we have nine 
um, seats on the commission, and there are currently seven people serving. We had a brief period of time earlier this year when we had a full complement of, of nine members, but uh, one person has just left town, another one has moved to a different commission. And so we have two vacancies currently. And the way that, well, the, the conventional way of, of applying is that there is a volunteer form that is on the town website that you would complete and sub submit online. And then according to your affiliation, either the DTC or the RTC would then look at the application and nominate you to the board of selectmen. And it's the board of selectmen who make the appointment. So it's not an elected position, but there are some steps to go through. Uh, the way I describe it makes it sound like it's very bureaucratic and process heavy, but it isn't that bad at all. And uh, I think in my case, I probably skipped out the volunteer form because I was conscripted, but um, that would be the conventional way of doing it. The DTC being the Democratic Town Committee, the RTC being the Republican Town Committee, because there is proportional representation, like yes. on all boards and commissions, but yeah, you could yes. also be so unaffiliated. We, we can have need... a maximum of... I was going to say, you don't need to be a member of either party. You can be unaffiliated as well, too. Yes, and I'm actually technically unaffiliated, but I think that you still need a DTC or RTC uh, Appoint a uh, nomination, I should say, not appointment, but nomination. Um, Actually, I think it can be done without either of the town committees nominating okay. you if the first select person uh, brings that up in front of the board of, of selectmen. So, this is all just to encourage people not to feel that, you know, there's a huge political component to uh, serving on beautification. Is that is that fair? Oh, absolutely. And if that is a deterrent, then I, I, really don't mean to overstate. I'm simply recalling the process that, that I went through and what I uh, tell people who are interested, but it really doesn't involve any kind of political consideration, either you know the, the role itself or anything that we do. I mean, I, I always think of the environment as being apolitical. We are... I don't, don't mean to sound like an advocate, but we're really dealing with issues, not politics. And uh, any uh, need for DTC or RTC is, is simply a stepping stone uh, process um, if, if it's applicable. And you know, as you say, maybe if you're unaffiliated and appointed by the, the first selectman, then you can avoid all of that too. And there's an interview process with the board of selectmen prior to your nomination coming before them. Uh, but I, uh, having served in town government myself for 20 years, I can't remember uh, a time when somebody had a hard, difficult path to to trod to get on one of these boards or commissions if they're interested. There's actually a shortage in uh, in many of the boards and commissions. Yes, I was going to say that. We, we really, really do need volunteers. And uh, I have I've seen a lot of interest in them. Uh, in fact, I was talking to Linda O'Leary about it was today that um, it, somehow something's got stalled. You know, we, we've had some interest expressed, and may, maybe people just change their mind. But I think that ours is a very lively commission. It's very friendly, very collaborative. We do a lot of um, actual work ourselves, physical work. I could talk about that in, in a minute. And so it's a very uh, fun and active commission to be part of. And you really see the results of our work in town. And you can see that on TV 79, where we broadcast uh, all of your meetings and they're archived on our website as well, too. Juliet Kane, our guest today on Inside Town Hall. She is the chair of the Beautification Commission. And I'd like to talk about some of the work that you've done that people would uh, probably recognize in town, but not, not maybe know where it actually came from. Um, and we're recording this in, in, in mid uh, September and, uh, probably the thing that's most prominent in people's minds are the beautiful hanging baskets on the po Boston post road, either downtown in, uh, or in the Roden Heights. Um, uh, I'm going to embarrass myself. I think you said once there were 244 of those baskets. Yes. Yes. I think each year it seems to get you know, a, a bigger and bigger number of people are interested in 
uh, some businesses are interested in buying them from us. But you're right, it's uh, over 200 baskets that we are responsible for. So the Beautification Commission uh, orders those baskets and uh, we work at the beginning of May with Public Works. We, we meet down at uh, Weed Beach, we unwrap them, we put the hanging chains on them. And then it's a, it's a very lean, mean machine. Public Works comes in, takes them all and then hangs them. And it's all done in a matter of hours. So uh, it, it's quite a seamless process. And probably I would say, if you don't know anything else about the Beautification Commission, we're probably known for our hanging baskets primarily. And because they're so visible, you, you see them every time you drive down the post road in, in town. Uh, we, see, we have them at Tilly Pond, we have them at Weed Beach, and we have some, some businesses, as I said, who actually buy them from us, the Beautification Commission, and they take care of them. Like I think the library, um, the library is not a good example of buying from us, but uh, the, uh, one of the banks uh, buys from us and then they look after their, um, their own baskets. But we are responsible. We hire a, a, a landscaping company to water them throughout the season. And we were a little ambitious this year. We thought that maybe we don't only need watering twice a week, but with the terrible drought we had, we had to up that to the three times a week. In fact, there was one point where I thought they were all going to die and uh, we managed to rescue them. Now, I don't have much of a green thumb, but I think are those impatience yes. in those baskets? Yes, they're annuals. And you really need annuals in hanging baskets because even though you can say, well, maybe it would be more cost efficient if we had perennials. Perennials will only flower for a short period of the season. Um, and yes, you could use them again, but you're not going to get that same overall appearance. And even though I, from a personal perspective, annual plants are not my, my favorite, I don't think they're the most useful for um, the environment. But uh, here is a case where the aesthetics are so important for the town. Uh, we are known for our hanging baskets. It's a core activity of the Beautification Commission. And so I think with, with, with all of that, I, I think it is you know, an important aspect of, of our work for the town. Uh, how do you pay for those hanging baskets? Well, we have a, an annual budget and that varies from year to year according to you know what else is going on in town and this year I'm very happy to say that we've had an increase in our budget last year was a, a little bit tight and the hanging baskets are a significant portion of our expenditures so with what we have left after after that and I won't get too granular we are able to use those funds to work on other activities and other plantings. And you will also, as you drive around through town at various uh, traffic islands and places, see other plantings and a, and a green sign uh, indicating that they were made possible by donations from various businesses in town. Are, are you involved with those as well too? Yes. So that's uh, another core aspect of our work work and that is the adopt a garden program and under that program the idea is that businesses mostly landscapers but any business that's prepared to um, basically look after one of these traffic islands or, or just a, a small garden on an exit or entrance ramp to the 95 is basically responsible for the spot that is designated and so that means that they're responsible for doing the initial planting and then also for the maintenance. And so you'll see a variety of different styles around town and you'll see different names on the green signs. And we are actually now, the, the, the program is a, a legacy program that existed before I joined the commission. And we're currently looking at how we can Kind of revitalize that program because I think some of the businesses may have lost a little bit of interest or it's just not, um, uh, maybe it's not rewarding enough for them. So we're looking at ways in which we can incentivize and motivate 
uh, the, our current sponsors and maybe attract more sponsors too, because we do have some islands and some gardens that are, uh, are awaiting adoption. And it's quite, it is quite a commitment because it's not only just the planting, but it's that maintenance. And so that's gonna mean watering and looking after the appearance. And you can see around town, it doesn't take very long for very tall weedy mugwort to grow uh, crabgrass and everything else. And so, again, you're know, going back to the core mission of the Beautification Commission, which is to improve the overall appearance. That's very important for us that they, those islands are maintained. And we do appreciate it. It's a lot of work. But I think we need to remind our sponsors that it goes with the territory. You have your, your sign advertising your business and the quid pro quo is some commitment to looking after the the spot that you've adopted and do they pay for the privilege of being a sponsor of that particular garden they, they don't pay us but they are financially responsible for the spot itself so they fund the plantings and they fund the the maintenance and that's why traditionally it's been easier for landscapers uh, who are already in that business to ad adopt those areas. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're a, a non-landscaper business, you need you usually need to hire somebody to do it. Um, and do you get to um, approve what it, they want to plant in there? No, not really. But I think that might be part of the new wave because, as I mentioned, I am very keen on seeing more native plantings in town. I think that that is a very good way in which to bolster our you know, biodiversity, uh, de depending on whether you're using woody shrubs or, or trees, you can, you, they can effectively sequester carbon and store carbon. And all of those issues are are getting more and more important for us. And if we can start even in a small way to do that via our commission and through educating, I think that's gonna be very important. I uh, think that that kind of uh, emphasis hasn't really been at the forefront to date, but I think a selling point there with our businesses is that native plants require less TLC. They don't need as much water. And once they're established, you can basically leave them alone and they'll sort themselves out because they are adapted to our climate. They're adapted to our geology. And aside from just some maintenance, so they don't get com completely out of control, maybe thinning them out, I think it's a lot less, less work. And you may not have the constant color that you would with annuals, but you have, I, I think it's a lot easier from a maintenance perspective and you could always throw some annuals in there. So I think there's a way to achieve both looks and uh, really address any issues of it being burdensome on our businesses. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I should acknowledge that I made a donation uh, uh, to the Beautification Commission, tax deductible, uh, <laughs> on behalf of one of my other many passions, which is the Commuter Action Group. And uh, Ms. Kane and the commission it was very kind and uh, doing some plannings around the Neroden Heights train station. So my interest was particularly in trying to make the commuting experience a little more attractive. And uh, I have to take my straw hat off to you and your team because you did a beautiful job and you were out there in the depths of the drought every single day watering those plants. Uh, I couldn't lift a watering uh, barrel at all, but uh, you were out there maintaining them. So I thank you very much uh, for that. Well, I would say it was a pleasure, but it was actually miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was really miserable. But I think that you lit a fire under us because you were out there uh, wanting to advertise what we were doing. And I was desperately trying to slow you down and say, no, no, we're not ready. We're not ready for prime time. But you very carefully photographed the plants that were looking good and uh, made it seem like we'd made more progress than we actually had. And I think that, you see, again, it's all a question of motivation, isn't it? I think that your generosity and your interest and your efforts of publicity really made us want to go that extra mile. 
And we are going to be planting some, some more plants. I, think I told you earlier that we have some volunteer plants from the slopes that I can talk about in a, in a minute. And I've been using those to fill in some gaps down at, at Neuroton. But I think we need to have just you know, one last uh, purchase so that we, we can fill in the gaps. Now, next year, they will, they will spread, you know, you, you know that uh, phrase that year one is they sleep, year two, they creep, and year three, they leap. So mm-hmm. we're in the, uh, we're sort of in the, the sleep mode, but I, I, I think they'll, they may skip a year and just leap next year. But I think we'll be ready really for, for prime time uh, by the spring. Juliet Kane is our guest today on Inside Town Hall. We are interviewing her about her work as chair of the Beautification uh, Commission. Um, so we mentioned the uh, uh, the hanging baskets and uh, the traffic islands and some of the sponsored work there as well, too. Are you responsible for the Christmas lights downtown? No, that's not us. Um I'd like to tell you Chamber who's, of who's, Commerce. Yeah, maybe? that's it. Chamber of Commerce. Yes, that's it. No, we're not. We don't do that. But we have taken on. So I was saying that Adopt a Garden and the Hanging Baskets are probably, if anybody knows anything about us, they probably associate us with with those two initiatives. But recently, we've taken on more uh, planting in um, other areas. We are trying to beautify and create some habitat in different parts of the town. And our first efforts were actually at the town hall. The slopes between the town hall and the Mailer Center were really overrun with very woody juniper, looked terrible. And we heard that it would be appreciated if we could do something. So we thought about it. One of the biggest challenges was the, the angle of the slopes and how we would stop the plants just rolling down the hill. And we, we well, this, this is sort of interesting because it uh, also highlights our excellent relationship with public works. We talk with public works, like, could we build a retaining wall? No, uh, that apparently leads to kids jumping and you know, all sorts of potential um, safety issues. So we finally hit on the idea of, of using jute, you know, very, very heavy material that we would lay across the ground and stake it in that would try and shore the the earth. And then we would cut holes in the jute when we planted. And then the the jute, as the jute sort of disintegrates, the roots of the native plants would take over and hold the bank in in place. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much worked, except that the, it turns out the soil that Public Works provided for us, I forget where they got it from now, is so fertile that our plants just grow exponentially. I mean, they're just absolutely huge. And I've been desperately trying, we've been trying to keep them cut down so they don't get too top heavy and uh, for, the, for, the, for the root mass. But by and large, uh, the systems work really well. And we, we really haven't had the, uh, the, the, uh, the avalanche that I was, anticipating if we did it did it wrong and we we lived through we did we started in 2019 and shortly after that we had the worst storms ever and i was thinking oh my gosh i don't go to town hall it's the the whole parking lot is going to be just mud from our slopes and i was dreading it dreading it i put it off put off going put off going and i thought well surely i would have had a call by now if if that had happened and i got there and everything was calm and it was just wonderful so it just proves the point that your native plants, and I'm sorry, that I just feel like I'm almost getting paid for advertising here, but your native plants not only provide habitat, but they help with soil erosion and they aerate the soil. It's, it's just a perfect. So let us let me play devil's advocate for a second and ask a question. You know, you're the Beautification Commission. Um, why aren't you making attractive flower beds of tulips all arranged in some <laughs> symmetrical pattern and then maybe daffodils coming up for easter and you know um, rose bushes in the in june or whenever those things come out i'm not no gardener um why aren't you into ornamental gardening what's this 
affliction that you have with yeah. uh, native plants. And, You're and right. what, do you mean, what, what do you mean by native plants? Yes, it is an affliction, isn't it? And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, by native plants, I mean the plants that are indigenous to a particular area, not to the US because the US is so big that different plants grow in different areas, but are really native to our region. We, we call it an eco-region. And because they are uh, they've basically grown up uh, in concert with our indigenous insects. And we have a lot of insects and pollinators that are what we call specialists that can only survive on a, one particular plant. And the, the, the best example that everybody knows about is the relationship, the symbiotic relationship between the milkweed and the monarch butterfly. And because we have a dearth of milkweed, we're losing our monarch population. And so we are uh, not, not just beautification commission, but, but uh, generally people who understand this are making huge efforts to plant milkweed in order to reestablish the monarch population. But it's not just the, the monarchs. So they, they get a lot of press, just like honeybees get a lot of press and people forget about the native bees. And what we want to provide is a, a, a our plantings that host a broad spectrum of pollinators and uh, insects, so that we're we're keeping things in balance. I mean, you have to. So some people think of our environment and biodiversity as sort of a, a Jenga game, and you know you can keep those blocks in place by removing just one, two maybe by three and four, five and six. You're getting a little instability in your block. And that's exactly what's happening in our environment. We're removing species, I don't know daily, but we're, we're periodically removing species and it's destabilizing our ecosystems. And I realize that we're just the Dairy and Beautification Commission um, and we're not able to solve the problem, but we can certainly make steps towards in improving the situation and educating people. If, if everybody were to plant some native plants, it would make a, a, a big difference overall. And, uh, and not, when I say plants, I mean plants, shrubs, trees. Trees are obviously the best bang for the buck because you've got that big mass and a big root system that will uh, sequester and store carbon very efficiently. Native grasses as well too, and they can be very attractive. Yes. The only reason I haven't used those to date is because they, well, everything spreads, but they also don't have much color. And where I have free reign and where we have free reign, I, I think it's important to try and have some color. And so, it, it, you know, it's, it's a balance, but I, I, I love native, native grasses and, uh, um, and uh, certainly it's, uh, you know, something to think about in, in uh, a private garden. Do you do any work with the garden club at the, the Dairy and Community Association? Yes. So there, well, there are two different things. There's the greenhouse group at the uh, Dairy and Community Association. And for the past three years, I ran the propagation team there. I'm just currently an associate member because I've taken on quite a few things and I'm having trouble juggling it all. So I'm taking a, a step back from that. For this year and then there's the garden club of darian which is a separate organization and that is part of the garden club of america and for that i was also a member there and i'm taking a leave from them as well but i've chaired the horticulture committee and i've chaired the uh, conservation committee and uh, i've also done some work at, with the garden club of america at the national level as a regional representative you uh, are what we call a joiner. You, uh, <laughs> joiner. I'm a serial stop, joiner. Right? Yes. Serial joiner. Yes, right? I'm a serial yeah. joiner. At the moment, I'm a serial lever. I mean, so I've taken on a little bit too much. I've also just, I'm now sitting on the Climate Smart Agriculture and Forestry Working Group of the GC3, the Governor's Council for Climate Change. So I'm sort of trying to juggle these, these, these things, but it's another area where I think uh, I can add some value. 
Uh, she's awfully busy. Juliet Kane <laughs> actually found time to sit down here with us on Inside Town Hall and talk about the Beautification Commission, of which she is chair. If our viewers are interested in getting involved, um, making a donation, uh, they have uh, great ideas of maybe a location for more plantings, etc. How can they um, be in touch and how can they get involved? Yes, um, we would love, obviously we love donations, but equally we, we love volunteers and we love, um, you know, any uh, applications to, to join us. So I mentioned at the beginning of the program that we are too short on our, two people short on our commission. So we were a, a body of nine and we currently have seven. So we're looking for two more. And I think the, the easiest way, because off the top of my head and because I've been put on the spot, I can't remember our email address. But if you go to the town website and just look at Beautification Commission, you will find all the information there. You'll see the current members. And also, we got a little bit sidetracked just now with, with other activities, but the town website, the, the Beautification landing page, has a good uh, description of the work that we've been doing and work that we're planning. So you can take a look there to read in a bit more detail. And we have links to other areas of interest. So we have links to information about native plants. We have links to how to get rid of invasive plants and uh, just, just more information about us. And you'll also see our email address there, which I'm really sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head because I'm on the spot. The beauty of television is that I can add your email address at the bottom of the screen right now. Just look down below here. Oh, and you'll wonderful. see you'll see the email address for uh, Juliet Kane, chair of the Beautification Commission. I really want to thank you, uh, A, for being on the program today, and B, for all of your hard work. Uh, you you are living up to the name of your organization. Uh, you really do make Darian look beautiful. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Jim. It's a pleasure to to talk to you, and I didn't realize I had so much to say. <laughs> Well, and I appreciate your uh, finding time to do it in your busy schedule, Pleasure. too. So thank you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you. Yes, viewers, you have done it once again. You have watched successfully another edition of Inside Town Hall.